Christ be beside me, Christ be before me, Christ be behind me, King of my heart. Christ be within me, Christ be below me, Christ be above me, never to part. Christ on my right hand, Christ on my left hand, Christ all around me, shield in my strife. Christ in my sleeping, Christ in my sitting, Christ in my rising, light of my life. Christ be in all hearts thinking about me, Christ be on all tongues telling of me, Christ be the vision in eyes that see me, in ears that hear me. Christ ever be. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And welcome. Uh, welcome to this Requiem Mass, which we celebrate for uh, the repose of the soul of Mary Morgan. We pray that she may rest in peace and rise in glory. And we pray also for her husband, Tom, and her sons, John, Brian, and Peter, and for all the grandchildren, and for all the family, and for all those who love her very, very dearly, and that you may be consoled uh, at this time. With great gratitude, we remember Mary, we give thanks for all her kindness and generosity. And we hand everything over into the arms of our loving and merciful Savior. We pray for her and we call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And we also pray in this Mass for Anna Sebastina Teresa, that she may rest in peace 
and for Ignatius Fernandez on his birthday. Let us pray. O God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant Mary, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of the Kings. The stream in the place where Elijah lay hidden dried up, for the country had no rain. And then the word of the Lord came to Elijah, Up and go to Zarephath, a Sidonian town, and stay there. I have ordered a widow there to give you food. So he went off to Sidon, and when he reached the city gate, there was a widow gathering sticks. Addressing her, he said, Please bring a little water in a vessel for me to drink. She was setting off to bring it when he called after her. Please, he said, bring me a scrap of bread in your hand. As the Lord your God lives, she replied, I have no baked bread, but only a handful of meal in a jar and a little oil in a jug. I am just gathering a stick or two to go and prepare this for myself and my son to eat, and then we shall die. But Elijah said to her, Do not be afraid. Go and do as you have said, but first make a little scone of it for me and bring it to me, and then make some for yourself and for your son. For thus the Lord speaks, the God of Israel, Jar of meal shall not be spent, jug of oil shall not be emptied, before the day when the Lord sends rain on the face of the earth. The woman went and did as Elijah told her, and they ate the food, she, himself, and her son. The jar of meal was not spent, now the jug of oil emptied, just as the Lord had foretold through Elijah. The Word of the Lord. Be Lift up the light of your face on us, O Lord. Lift up the light of your face on us, O Lord. When I call, answer me, O God of justice. From anguish you released me, have mercy and hear me. O men, how long will your hearts be closed? Will you love what is futile and seek what is false? Lift up the light of your face and us, O Lord. It is the Lord who grants favors to those whom he loves. The Lord hears me whenever I call him. Fear him, do not sin. Ponder on your bed and be still. What can bring us happiness, many say. Lift up the light of your face on us, O Lord. You have put into my heart a greater joy than they have from abundance of corn and new wine. Lift up the light of your face on us, O Lord. Please stand to greet the Gospel. Alleluia, Alleluia. Your light must shine in the sight of men, so that seeing your good works, they may give the praise to your Father in heaven. Alleluia.
And the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt becomes tasteless, what can make it salty again? It is good for nothing. It can only be thrown out to be trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hilltop cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp to put it under a tub. They put it on the lampstand where it shines for everyone in the house. In the same way, your light must shine in the sight of men so that seeing your good works, they may give the praise to your Father in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. The first reading is uh, such a beautiful tale, such a beautiful tale of welcome and hospitality, of generosity and greatness of heart. How this woman was prepared to give everything to this visitor, this stranger in her midst. So he comes to this country place and he receives such hospitality. At the end of this Mass, we will hear about the story of Mary's life. From her early childhood onwards, and a life very much of sharing with others, sharing in her own family, sharing in the community, very much a a life of uh, welcome. And Mary was, of course, uh, such a familiar face for so many, many years in St. Anselm's Church. And this, in some ways, for her, as for so many, was like her second home. So we give thanks for her presence over so many years, for her gift to Tom and her family, her children, her grandchildren. And in this Mass, uh, to give thanks to give thanks for all that you received uh, from Mary. Give thanks for the ways in which her life touched your life with love and concern, the ways in which her life touched your life with joy and happiness. And those... uh, pictures that you carry in your heart of her, those pictures of her are a joy to you for forever. 
And in the Gospel passage, Jesus speaks very powerfully. He says to us, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. You are salt of the earth and light of the world. And how true that was for Mary in her personal life, in her life of prayer, in her life of faith, in her desire, her longing for the Lord, her longing to meet him in Holy Communion, discovering in there in a very profound way what is described in the first reading. That food which is never spent, that goes on feeding us and nourishing us and is never emptied. That longing which the Eucharist carries in it the longing of Jesus himself, the longing of Jesus to share his life with Mary. And so often she did that in the Eucharist, receiving that life, sharing that life, sharing her life. And in her heart and soul, hearing now these beautiful words of the Gospel, speaking to her, you are the salt of the earth, you are the light of the world, salt and light, salt that will never lose its taste, light that will always shine brightly. So we pray for Mary that she may rest in peace and we pray for the consolation of Tom and her sons. Eternal rest grant unto Mary, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. May she rest in peace. Amen. God, the Almighty Father, raise Christ, his Son, from the dead. With confidence, we ask him to save all his people, living and dead. We pray for Mary as she meets God. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for Mary as she is welcomed by the saints into heaven. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all who have died in Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For Mary's family and friends, that the Lord may console them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our diseased relatives and friends, that they may have the reward of their goodness. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all the sick, Help them in their need. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For peace in the world. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Hail Mary, full, full of, of grace, grace. The, the Lord, Lord is with thee. thee. Blessed, blessed are thou among women, women. And, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother, Mother of God, God pray, pray for, for us sinners, sinners now, now and at the, the hour of our death. death. Amen. Amen. God, our shelter and strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for our departed sister Mary. Cleanse her and all the faithful departed of their sins and grant them the fullness of redemption. Through Christ our Lord. 
Amen. Amen. Drop!
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we've received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we've received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and Jews may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May Lord accept the sacrifice of your hand for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and for our holy church. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Mary. We bestow your mercy that she, who did not doubt your son to be a loving saviour, may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God, it is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for as one alone he accepted death, so that we might all escape from dying. As one man he chose to die, so that in your sight we all might live forever. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you as with joy we proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna. In the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, 
so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you felt us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray, that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Vincent our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember your servant Mary, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your Son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, 
with blessed Joseph her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. To him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that with the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, to set your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let's offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
as we pray for Mary and pray that she may be drawn very, very deeply to the Lord, so also I invite you to make your own spiritual communion at home and be united with her in the Lord. Please join me in the prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul, so that I may unite myself wholly to you, now and forever. Amen. sacrament of his body, food for the journey. Mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our sister Mary may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now we will listen to a eulogy uh, written by Mary's son, John. A eulogy for Mary Morgan, wife, mother, grandma. A personal reflection in these the most difficult of times. It is not until you sit down to write something like this that you realize exactly how absurd it is to attempt to summarize the life of someone so profound and influential in your life in just a couple of pages of text. 
I could describe the course of her life, list her achievements and the impact she has had on me and the people around me. But it would not be enough. There would be too many and things would get omitted. Instead, I would like to try to provide a sense of who she was and what she meant to us. Mary O'Sullivan was born in Kalahaniska, County Kerry in the summer of 1936 to John and Ellen O'Sullivan, the second eldest of six children. As a child, she loved to sing and dance and even talked about running away with a friend of hers to become famous actresses, singing and dancing all day long. Of course, like many childhood dreams, this was not to be. But she always loved dancing and loved going to dances as a young girl. She would often regale us with tales of life working with animals, milking the cows, looking after the sheep of her mother and father, loving if stern but fair, her brothers and sisters. She had a happy upbringing, a time of hard work and simple pleasures, with tales of cycling into town and walking to church on a Sunday in new shoes and Sunday best. School was over the mountain and involved a long walk cross country in all weathers. She had a quick and nimble mind, good with figures and enjoying both maths and English. Occasionally, a parcel would arrive from America, full of her cousin's hand-me-down dresses that the sisters would then fight over who would be first to try on and wear. Her sister Bridget died just five weeks old in 1944. Her other brother Michael died of brain tumor in 1973. But it was probably the death of her brother Patrick knocked off his bike in 1953 and aged just 14 that affected her the most. She never ever really got over losing him as they were very close. She moved to England in the early 60s and in 1963 she met her future husband Tom Morgan. She often described him as having two left feet when it came to dancing but even so she loved him dearly. In February 1965, they were married in Wembley to cheers of passing buses and settled down with the first of three children <coughs> arriving two years later. With three boys, John, Brian and Peter separated by less than four years, there would <coughs> often be arguments and fights, with allegiances changing by the hour two against one, followed by a different two against one, etc. Long journeys especially could be very demanding. Mum and dad in the friend, with the three boys in the back, imaginary boundaries defended and argued over in high-pitched voices. I am amazed, looking back, that we were not abandoned on a hard shoulder somewhere out in the middle of nowhere. Mom even strongly suggested this possibility on more than one occasion. I remember it snowing one year and going to the park when it was dark with just Mom, Brian and myself. Mom tired having had a full day working but just as excited as we were to throw snowballs and make snowmen. Growing up, we lived in a three-bedroom end of terrace house in South Hall with a pleasant garden and a large park bordering to the back. Obviously, with the park so close, we insisted on playing football and riding bikes in the backyard rather than go to the park. The back garden 
would be split between a vegetable batch with potatoes, carrots, peas, etc. and a section of grass which would be covered with muddy bike tracks as we attempted to cycle round and round. I just about remember the original garage and being discovered again with my elder brother having convinced ourselves that we would help by painting a garage bench and having liberally coated the bench and most of each other with white matte paint and then being dragged off to the bath and being scrubbed extensively and repeatedly until bright red although not before the obligatory embarrassing photo was taken. We would all want a family pet but it was mum who would feed and look after the various family goldfish, rabbits, cats and occasional dog throughout the years. She was always very kind to animals, loved her dog and was very upset when he passed away while she was in hospital. Family holidays, either camping in the UK or visiting relatives in Ireland, arriving at campsite and certain family members making themselves discreet while the tent would be put up then coming back with offers to help. Visits to Ireland, long journeys by ferry. Typically, we would go for three weeks. For at least one week, it would rain constantly, sometimes all three. We would visit Auntie Catherine in Dublin, who also cooked amazing apple pies, and then would drive down to Kerry, to Kalahaniska, nearest down five miles, Amaze, amazing countryside, interesting people. Through all this, mom would reside with love and affection and good humor for us all. Dad was just as loving, but worked long and hard and would be away at work. She was our rock. In her heyday, she was a prolific cook, baking breads and cakes and fruit lattices a plenty. Fruit lattices would be made using local apples, homegrown rhubarb uh, or minced meat. They would always be one or more rich cakes baked before Christmas. As is the way with teenagers, I used to take this for granted, remembering numerous sessions with friends around the backroom table, playing Dungeons and Dragons and drinking and eating copious amounts of cakes and tea. When I had been away and was home after a long trip, she would always offer to cook my favorite pick-me-up, eggs, sausage and toast. Mum has often suggested that as a generation way so restricted, she had been more relaxed with us and so was a little worried about how we would treat the next generation. She need not have worried, although she was responsible for introducing Pelin to the world of Teletubbies. I remember her tears when I first left to go to Polytechnic, dropped off at the station with no real idea what I was letting myself in for, and how proud she was when I graduated four years later and for that matter, when Peter graduated subsequently. Home, like a port in the storm, was always safe and secure. A happy place to which I could retreat, with little, if any, warning when needed. Mom was always happy to receive visitors, and always made time. As a proud Kerry woman, she would celebrate when Kerry did well in the hurling or the football. Though living here for 50 plus years, she never really left Ireland behind properly, never lost her faith and took comfort from God. She attended mass every week she could, took communion and gave whatever time she could to help the church. She would accompany her sister Catherine on various trips, visiting Lourdes, the Vatican, and going to seeing Pope John Paul II in Dublin. She was tenacious. She would not often give up if she had set her mind on something. 
for example, passing her driving test on the sixth attempt. Mum loved all her grandchildren, Charlie, Gregory, Helen, and Reuben, and all of us. She passed away quietly on the evening of Friday, the 22nd of May, 2020. Would have been 84 tomorrow. She will be surely missed. Thank you for listening, participating. I know mom would be so grateful. Our sister Mary has fallen asleep in Christ, confident in our hope of eternal life. Let us commend her to the loving mercy of our Father and let our prayers go with her. She was adopted as God's daughter in baptism and was nourished at the table of the Lord. May she now inherit the promise of eternal life and take her place at the table of God's children in heaven. Let us pray also on our own behalf that we who now mourn and are saddened may one day go forth with our sister to meet the Lord of life when he appears in glory. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister Mary in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Mary in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us to remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our sister forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In peace, we will take Mary to her place of rest. Thanks be to God.
Yeah.